Good morning. Welcome to Knox United Church. Am I on? Okay. I'm hearing things going on in the background. Um, <laughs> so I'm so glad you came. My name is Reverend Rachel. I'm the minister here, and it's so great to see everybody. There's some new faces. There's old faces I haven't seen in a while. There's people that are here all the time. It's great to see everyone. I am super excited today. I have no idea why. So um, we have announcements. Uh, on April 1st, uh, Tony Snow is going to be coming, Reverend Tony Snow is going to be coming uh, to have a, hold a reconciliation circle. And Tony Snow is from Stony Nation. He is uh, the indigenous minister for the Chinookwins region. And throughout Lent, he's traveling around southern Alberta um, doing different talks and exercises to start a reconciliation conversation and right relationships conversation so the one that we're hosting will be on April 1st at 1 and it's going to be a circle conversation where he's going to share what the church is doing at the national level and the regional level and what we could do locally and also have question and answers so if you are curious about stuff this is the quest time to come because you can ask questions about right relations or indigenous ministries or what we can do to help the healing start, and um, he'll be there to help answer it. Um, so it'll be a great afternoon of conversation, so I'm hoping everyone will come. Yeah, I'll be here at the church in the hall, and tell people about it, like invite your neighbors, your friends. It'll be, it's a great way to engage the community as well in this conversation, as we're learning how to live in apology. Um, our other announcement is April uh, 19th. Uh, we're going to have our spring luncheon. Uh, there's posters available now. Um, it's uh, $15 for lunch. Um, and to help prepare us for the fundraiser, we're asking everyone, if you shop at Friesen's, to put in the church phone number. So that way we can use those points to help purchase the food for the fundraiser. And if you don't shop at Friesen's, feel free to put um, a donation in an envelope and just write for fall luncheon fundraiser. And then those funds can go in. Or you can buy gift cards from Friesen's. And we can use those to buy stuff. And Margaret's pointing. Is there? Oh, is it spring now? Sorry, the snow has me confused. It's apparently spring now. The snow that started in November has me so mixed up. So it's the spring luncheon. So we'll be purchasing the food. The fall luncheon, we get to make a bunch of stuff. So spring luncheon on April 19th, because it's now becoming springtime, and the snow's going to go away eventually. Um, <laughs> sorry about that, as I'm getting the world confused. Um, so, <laughs> to help ground us and prepare us for worship, um, let's join together in sharing the call to welcome. The words will be on the screen. Your parts are in white. Come to the banqueting table, all you who follow Jesus. Come, find your place at the table. Might your language, lenses, and lived faith be missional? How is the Spirit animating your life of faith? In worship, let us find out through the grace of God. I don't, it, things are, I don't know. There's little cracky sounds, and it's the sound system. It's the little gnomes playing with the sound system. So to start us off with an opening hymn, uh, please stand as you're able. The words will be on the screen, and we're going to sing, I Love to Tell the Story. Satisfies my longings 
as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory, to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, more wonderful it seems than all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story, for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy word. I love to tell the story will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story for those who know it best. Seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the when in scenes of glory I sing the new, new song, twill be the old, old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story, twill be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story. And his love. Please be seated. Please prepare yourself for prayer. Holy and compassionate God, who is paused by the side of the road to care for the stranger, who reaches out with healing love and in any need and who notice those abandoned and discarded by society, we are asking here, who is the neighbor you would have me serve? May we be open to your surprising answer to that question. May we be ready to respond with body, mind, and spirit. Amen. Oh. Am I doing that? Okay, there is something I'm stepping on that's causing the snapping sound. We will investigate after the service. As we light our Christ candle, may we remember the servers that are in our lives. As we are doing a theological banquet throughout Lent, we're talking about different theologies and different ways of being. And the server is how the missionals live out their faith, serving those around us throughout our lives and out in the world. So may Christ's light remind us of those people today. As we're remembering People, we also remember our offering, how we can give our time and our talents through volunteering, how we can give financial donations through PAR, e-transfer, or in the donation plates located the back beside the sound booth. It's a celebration of our gifts. We invite you to share your offerings. The activities and the commitments inspired by our faith become our spiritual offering to the world. Our love of Jesus, our dedication to the church, the help of our neighbor, the work for justice, the contemplative journey. These are the diverse expressions of love of God that we can share and how we share our gratitude for life. As communities of faith, we receive and bless these offerings for their unique gifts that they are and the unique gifts that we all can share. 
In celebration of the gifts that we give, let's pray. Loving God, today we receive the gifts for those whose faith takes the shape of the acts of service beyond the congregation. Through them, Christ's compassionate presence is felt by those in most need of love and care, no matter who they are or where they are. They may be in hospitals, classrooms, shelters, recovery programs, thrift shops, your neighborhood cafe, a missional faith is shared unceremoniously through relationships of respect and compassion. With thanksgiving, we receive the gifts of God carried with generosity and humility through the expression of faith as we are led with them into the place Jesus would have us go. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is I Love the, I, the Lord and Sea and Sky. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together this beautiful song. Please stand as you're able. The words will be on the screen. Oh, it's a video. I'm a Lord of sea and sky. I'm a Lord of by Peninsula United Church for us to use during worship. The prayers of the people is a time when we pray for those in our community and out in the world. Uh, 
Okay, cool, I did plan ahead. So this one is a responsive prayer, and I remember to put the words on the screen. So um, every time that I say, let us give you thanks, you'll respond with, we give you thanks, blessed spirit. Prepare yourself for prayer. In our prayers, let us give thanks for the gifts of God and pray for those who work in God's vineyard for the bounty of the earth, for the goodness within human hearts, for power of change, and we will learn. Let us give thanks. We give thanks to you, Blessed Spirit. For all those who work for healing, for people in caring ministries, for archaeologists and researchers, for pastoral care workers and friends, for the hands of Christ in the world, for others we may wish to name. Let's take a moment and lift up names in prayer that we wish God to hear. Let us give thanks. We give you thanks, blessed spirit. For all those who learn and teach, for apprentices, supervisors, for students and resource people, for program directors and camp leaders, for schools and educators, for wisdom, knowledge, and guidance, let us give thanks. We give thanks, blessed spirit. For those who struggle with liberation and justice, for the witness of base communities, for mission and development workers, for those who risk their lives for others, for those who work for human rights, and for those who speak truth on behalf of the oppressed, for those who bear witness to the way Christ has led our way, let us give thanks. We give you thanks, blessed spirit. Amen. And let's join our voices together to say the prayer Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It's time for scripture. So let's hear some words from the book of Luke. I'm reading from the Gospel of Luke in the 10th chapter. And I'm going to read from... Uh, verse number 25 to verse 37. And the context is interesting as Jesus has already dispatched out the 70, 72 of, of which were his disciples were amongst them and into missional work. And they've come back and they're asking questions. And so this is the context that we're reading from. And this question that first comes up in this passage is not a friendly one. And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But he, desiring to just him, justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. 
Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and then he set him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and he gave them to the innkeeper saying, take care of him and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, you go and do likewise. May God bless us with this reading from his word. The story of helping thy neighbor is one of the things that inspires the missionals to do their work. We began the Lenten journey two weeks ago with an experience of faith of the messenger, of good news, the evangelical, the yellow. Last Sunday, we came home with the familiar experience of being members of the Christ body, the ecclesiastical live faith, the red. This morning, we take the faithful hands of those who live their faith in service to thy neighbor, to serve those in need like the Good Samaritan, the missional live faith, the purple. So let's take a quick look at a video that's been created by Janet Gear, the author of the book that we are covering throughout Lent, and uh, see what they think about the missional theology that they live. Turn it up. You may have to turn the actual computer up. The congregation I served were really interesting in living out their faith by making the world a better place. And the way they understood that was to take a small part of their life to look at the community around them and look around and say, where's the hurting? And where's the injustice? And can we create a totally different type of space that's not about that? And we, can it be a space that's creative and loving and welcoming? And that's how they lived out their faith. As we continue to explore the expression of faith in our church, people may come to mind who live their faith in a particular way that we might be lifting up today. This morning, as we focus on the faith practice that's focused on compassion and love, and loving thy neighbor. You may think of those who have quietly aided families and individuals in your community, or caring professionals like nurses, chaplains, teachers, social workers, or paramedics. You may even know people who have left the comforts of home to volunteer or work in underserved parts of the world. These are beautiful examples of the missional lived faith. Exploring the banquet of faith in our church is a way of discovering holy ground where each of us meets God's life-giving spirit. For the group that we're calling missionals, their meeting place with God is wherever they are in, feel they are needed. Their love of God is offered through the acts of practical aid and compassion. They are sometimes on the edge of congregational life because their work is away from Sunday morning worship. Perhaps this is you. If so, the hymns and prayers, the scriptures and the reflection this morning will have you in mind. You will meet and love God in a world that faces a neighbor and interacts with the stranger. 
Whether this is your most natural expression of faith or not, know that the Spirit is alive in this place, calling us through the good news, through a Christian community, compassion, justice, and wonder, to feast on the friendships that we share. The missional love faith is one of the lived theologies that helped me to understand my call to ministry as a diaconal minister. I love to help people and enjoy living out my faith by helping people outside of the church, by sharing my time and talents with them to help them reach their full potential. When I lived in Calgary, one of the first long addresses I had, because I moved a fair bit when I lived there, but I found a townhouse that happened to be owned by Calgary Housing. And most of the children and my neighbors were refugees, new to Canada. I would see the children in my complex riding their bikes all through the parking lot and through the, the common area, many of them with flat tires. Many of their parents were new to Canada and had no idea how to fix or maintain their kids' bikes. And a lot of them were refugees from war-torn countries, so this was the first time their children had ever had a bike. I started off by waving them down and just adding air, inflating their tires. As time went on, I started to replace the tires, fix them for them, gradually teaching the children and their parents how to repair the bikes themselves so that they can continue to maintain the bikes even after I had moved away. The parents <clears throat> had been spending hundreds of dollars taking their children's bikes to a local repair shop unaware of how easy and affordable it was to fix the tires themselves. Helping and serving my neighbor is one of the ways that I show God's love through my missional lived faith out in the world. And this is just one of the many examples of the missional life that I've lived. It was really hard to just pick one um, to share this morning. In Janet Gear's book, Undivided Love, she shares the missional live faith is a doing faith, which means missionals are not in our congregational building, but rather out in the world doing something, helping the world in a way of showing their faith. Only a portion of them will be here, visibly involved in our community of faith. Only a few are visibly volunteering in our church, perhaps in outreach programs, or a, uh, our lunch fundraisers. So we only know a fraction of the missionals among us. The rest are connected through one or two degrees of separation with our community of faith or our congregation. They may only come into the building when there's something to volunteer for or there's an outreach project that we're working on together. Their parents or grandparents may come regularly, but they rarely attend. They live their faith by being out in the world, volunteering or working in sectors that take care of other people. The book Undivided Love has a section for each of the five theologies at the banquet table called What is in a Name? For the missional lived faith, Janet Gere describes missionals as being authentic in expression. They're authentic in the way that they live their life by being hands-on, doing the work in a way that shares empathy, healing, and care, while building relationships with the people that they are helping. Historically, this work was carried out by missionaries. They were trying to help people in different areas of their life. The missionaries of the past hoped to teach those whom they were served how to live a better life than the one that they were born into. Folks finding themselves in a lived faith expression of theology shared the desire to heal and to help. When the church moves out of the building and into the world and into our neighborhood, it becomes a missional lived faith full of desire to help and serve others. 
In many places in the Canadian community-based ministries, they've become contextually responsive to the needs identified in that community. Here at Knox, the missional work of the past included Sunday school programs, which taught children who worked in the mines and out on the farms how to read. It was the clothing drives that were, we did for families who were living in poverty. It was the weekly luncheons, feeding the community an affordable meal that was well balanced, while raising funds to pay for a pipe organ, to build a hall, to build our buildings, and to do more ministry work for our community here in Drumheller. When we decided to build our hall, one of the ideas was that it would also create a gym space for the school down the street so they could have physical education classes because the building that they built did not have a gymnasium. So the children would come here for their phys ed classes. Other ways that our congregation has been missional is through the women's groups and the UCW, which is the United Church Women's Group, for those who don't know the acronym. They did so many things to improve the world that we live in, raising funds and awareness and educating us on different issues, doing fundraising and luncheons and just being a huge part of our community. They collect, and there's also the Mission and Service Fund that we collect money for regularly that then is given to our Mission and Service partners around the world to do outreach work for those who are living in need. It's how we as a church were actively involved with meeting the needs of our community outside of our building. The credo that Janet Gear has written for the mission to live faith says, I believe that through Jesus' call to discipleship, God's love is incarnate in followers who show love to thy neighbor and stranger. That single statement helps us to better understand how to serve the people in our community and care for the world around us, the way Jesus has taught us to do. Each of the theologies that Janet invites us to at this theological banquet also brings dangers and shadows to the table as we need to be aware to ensure the missional work that we are doing will shine through. A light will only shine brightly if it is understood that a shadow will be cast to make it glow. Helping others can be tricky business because humans are expert at seeing only what they see or they believe from their own perspective. Humans don't naturally have a self-awareness of how others see them. It's common that the helping professionals or the helping organizations cause harm to those whom they are trying to help. This happens when the folks who are doing the helping are invested in doing the work in such a way that benefits themselves versus being generally selfless in responding to others. The helpers may become focused on creating that feel-good feeling that is created by a sense of making a difference in somebody else's life. Their actions may be based on their own beliefs of what type of life another person that they are helping should have, or the work that is done in such a way that a dependency type relationship is created by the people who are they are hoping to help. They become dependent on the helper, causing a situation that when the helper stops being there, the folks that are being helped are still facing the same problem that they had before, before they received assistance therefore putting them back in the exact same situation they were in before they were helped. A habit of patching a wound without looking at the body is a metaphor that helps us to understand how the whole picture needs to be considered. For example, when I visited Cuba many years ago, many of the places we went to didn't have toilet seats on their toilets. And then when I returned to Canada and told people about it, their response is, well, how do we go about donating toilet seats to them? They need to have a toilet seat on their toilet. That's just weird. We can help them with that. 
When in reality, the real question is that we need to explore is why do we need toilet seats at all? I mean, if we just give them a toilet seat and it breaks again, they're gonna be without a toilet seat because they can't buy a new one. They aren't sold in Cuba. They can't get them into the country. So when we wanna help others, we need to make sure that the way that we're helping them will be beneficial for them and not just providing them a standard of living we expect versus a standard of living they expect. We are speaking here of the resistance to ask why, to think systematically, in a way of becoming attached to the problem which gives us something to do rather than cause, look at the cause of what which may be causing the problem in the first place. It's common to see that in storylines in books, in TV shows, and in movies, where someone has identified a problem that they're going to fix. Whenever you say, I'm going to fix that in a movie, you know drama is going to ensue. Because you can't just fix other people's problems. In many cases, the solution that is decided upon by the fixer or the helper, without consulting the person that they are helping, will cause more problems and drama in the storyline. This type of unhealthy communication style and relationship is the biggest danger that missionals will face and how they live out their faith. It's great for movies, not for real life. <laughs> The church as a whole must reconcile the history and the legacy that missionaries and others who fully embrace the work of the missional live faith have done. In the past, their work has, was done in accordance with the teachings that was influenced by imperialistic colonization, dependency, or other aims. These systematic the ideologies caused harm to those who the missionals were trying to help. When we can identify these lenses that were created as a way of controlling others and be held accountable for this mindset, it will create a shift that is needed to ensure that we're truly building people up and giving them the tools needed to grow to their full potential the way they want it to grow. The last piece I want to share about, about our theological banquet that we are sharing throughout Lent is the symbols. On our table, you'll see the yellow section that has the three crosses on it that symbolize the evangelical lived faith, focused on everything Christ-minded. The, the red section has the communion cup and the plate, and the baptismal font that's usually inside our larger baptismal fault. It's the bowl that holds the water. And it symbolizes the ecclesial of faith, the live faith inside our walls, celebrating worship and sacraments. This week, the missional live faith is being added to the table with the purple section. And if you look closely, you'll see there's two hands holding a tea set because the best conversations about how to start missional work usually happen over a cup of tea. So I only felt fitting that their hands serving tea as they serve the world that we live in. I wonder if the missional live faith is the theology you or someone you know identifies with most. How will you live it out? Amen. Our next hymn this morning is, Will You Come and Follow Me? Give a moment for the musicians to get into place. And we can stand as you're able to sing together. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be 
disciples at Pentecost. May the same spirit enliven you with passion to follow in Jesus' name. May Christ's abundant life beckon and embrace you, leading you always in the direction of hope and healing in a hurting world. And may the divine wholeness in which all things are held bless you and keep you, awaken and unfold you in the one heart to which you belong. Amen. Our closing hymn is Jesus Bids Us Shine. Jesus bids us shine with a pure, clear light, like a little candle burning in the night. In this world is darkness, so let us shine. You in your small corner, and I in mine. Jesus bids us shine, first of all for him. Well, he sees and knows it, if our light grows dim. Jesus walks beside us to help us shine. You in your small corner, and I in Jesus bids us shine, then for all around. Many kinds of darkness in the world are found. Sin and want and sorrow, so we must shine. You in your small corner and I in mine. Live life and prosper. I don't know why that came out. Um, <laughs> go out into the world and prosper out there and share the love of God with the world. Amen. Oh,